Welcome to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1, Episode 21, Thoughts. This episode is called Rag Tag. So, another episode I love. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including when this episode first premiered. No MCU spoilers for anything after that. The top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAG After Strikers, and I'm pleased to do so. And then there are some links to videos to help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive in. So, yeah, we see the recruitment by John Garrett of Ward. And, you know, to get the obvious and superficial out of the way, they do quite a good job de aging Bill Paxton. You know, that is what he used to look like. You know, I've seen movies from decades past that he was in. I really, but yeah. The, the deeper thing of this scene, I really appreciate, you know, basically, Garrett Ward was this angry young white man who was radicalized by Nazis. You know, they told him, you know, things will be better if you fight who we say you should fight. And that is sadly something that happens a lot, uh, you know, today. So, yeah, really appreciate them pointing out that's, yeah, that's a serious problem. And, yeah, um, the Trojan horse is very, very clever, and of course, they, you know, it wasn't finished, so they have to plug the USB into, you know, one of the, yeah, um, one of the machines hooked up to the hard drive, so that's unfortunate. And let's see. Right, and yeah, we, we learned that you know Garrett wanted Mike to be to put on a spectacle, a, sh a show in Bogota to make an impression. And Fitz continues to believe that Ward is innocent. And really, really cool when they bring out the Howling Commandos, vintage spy gadgets, you know, just, yeah. And Fitz the Klutz accidentally sets the, the you know, curtain on fire. And, yeah, so we get more of the, the flashback. And, yeah, Garrett abandons Ward and says, you know, if you're here, if you're still here in a few months, you know, we're, yeah, you're on my team, kind of thing. You know, this idea that in order to achieve your full potential, you have to go through something grueling. You know, there, there's that quote that the fascists love to, to spread, which, you know, so something like, soft men create, let's see, Hard times create hard men. Uh, hard men create soft times. Soft times create hard. Soft times, yeah. Soft times create soft men who create hard times, and round and round it goes, you know. And yeah, it's. I, f I forget. I forget which YouTuber, but it was. You know, someone pointed out it's not this like oh ancient quote that they you know they love to point to. Like, oh, ancient Greece, now they had it together. Uh, you know, in some ways, for sure, there were some really great things about that. But anyway, the, the yeah, you know, they, they like to say, oh, it's this ancient quote. And it's, first of all, it's, a, it's from a, a fiction, you know, yeah, a fiction novel. It's not th this, like, original quote from, like, a famous philosopher or something. And the book that it's from is not that old. Let's see. And <laughs> we finally see May smile. And it's only for a cover. So that's... I, I quite appreciate that detail. I really, really loved when Fitzsimmons was bickering as they're feeding... Colson and May lines, and you know the the 
and and yeah, the two of them end up bickering because what are they gonna do? Just stop, you know, part way through, and and Coulson can barely get out the thing with, you know, it has a cooler name. And loved May stopping the guy from using the red phone. And yeah, we see that, you know, that they don't have a hard drive, they have it all as hard copies, which, you know, that is one way to avoid hacking. And good scene between Mike and Reyna and yeah they see that you know Garrett was actually the original Deathlock get ready for a file transfer how large of a file yeah and very cool when they slide down the the rope and just gonna put out there that there is a similar thing in Expendables 4, and the effects are actually better in this, you know, almost 10 years old TV budget effect. And yeah, you know, Garrett wants the, you know, the, that serum thing for himself. And Sky laments that she didn't let Mike kill Ward, saying, I was stupid and weak. And Coulson assures her, you weren't weak. So you're saying she was stupid? <laughs> I don't think that was the best. I don't think it would have been terrible if he said, you're not stupid either after, you know. But it is true that, you know, having compassion is not weak. And, and yeah, that's... That is something, you know, Nazis do think that compassion is a weakness. And, yeah, this this episode, a couple of episodes of this season so far, have basically said, you know, this is what a Nazi does, and here's the, the more, you know, human perspective, the, the one that isn't, you know, trying to burn the world to the ground. And sometimes burning the world to the ground by accident and blaming it on other people. And I, I quite like, you know, May points out, you know, I am furious, but I'm not going to waste it on a tantrum. I'm going to use it to stop Ward. And we see that Ian Quinn's reputation has been restored. You know, he was criticizing the government. He's obviously guilty, but, you know, certain things have happened. So now he's, yeah, now people think he's innocent. So... Yeah, I hope this doesn't give Russell Brand any ideas. And, yeah, we hear, you know, oh, the, there were these monsters who were looking for a baby, and, oh, did the, the monsters kill the baby's parents? The monsters were the baby's parents, and that might be Sky. That That is legitimately very cool. Uh, you know, and, and there are, like... There are myth, you know, myths and legends about, you know, a monster or a god or something had a baby that looked human. And, yeah, we learned that the way that Ward survived was raiding cabins. And fascism does steal from those that they have deemed weak. The Nazis stole a lot of property and wealth from Jewish people, you know, which, you know, and, and then some people point to that and say, well, no, they, you know, they were, they were clearly, they had a lot of money. Yeah, because they stole and they killed the people they stole it from. That's not having a, a, you know, that's not impressive. Anyone who has the lack of empathy that that requires can do that. And many have. And the, let's see, yeah, we, we see, you know, Ward lie to Garrett about what he's talking to Reyna about. Which, you know, I, I do appreciate there's, you know, yeah, you know, every so often, 
Garrett says or does something where Ward is like, that's, I'm not okay with this, you know, but he can't completely come out and attack him yet. And Trip and, yeah, you know, Trip tries to do the, the fist bump with Fitz. Fitz puts his hand on top of it because that gag is still popular. Or was at the when when this episode first aired at least, and yeah, we see that Ward caught Fitzsimmons, and I I really appreciate you know he doesn't say you know sir I've got them he's just like long time no see, you know which is how you would greet you know that's that's a way to greet a friend. And, yeah, we see the, you know, ten years prior, Garrett finally tells Ward about Hydra. I really loved Fitz using the EMP on Garrett. You know, I'll, I'll grant that it's not super thought through. You know, he's a scientist, he's not a tactician. You know, which is where you go if you want tact. So, the, the yeah, you know, the... Uh, you know me, joy buzzer, I'm a real prankster, and he presses it, and it triggers, you know, and, yeah, that that is legitimately a, a clever, because, yeah, he heard Garrett is a deathlock, meaning parts of him are machine, yeah, EMP should, you know, if not outright kill him, do significant damage to him. And, yeah, and Fitz tells Ward to stop following orders. Throughout this episode, it happens at least twice, Ward keeps telling people to clear the room because Garrett is, you know, having some sort of medical emergency. And each time someone stays around, they just, they do not respect his authority. And, yeah, Garrett demands Ward kill Fitzsimmons for revenge. And, yeah, I, I do really appreciate that, you know, early in the episode, you know, I... Is it maybe, is it Sky who's like, you know, so, someone, some member of the team is like, why do these things, you know, look so so hokey? They're, you know, they don't look... The, the Howling Commandos spy gadget stuff doesn't look that impressive and you know someone points out well yeah so if spies get caught with it it looks innocent and that's exactly what ends up happening you know they don't immediately stop you know they, they don't tear the the little joy buzzer out of Fitz's hand they, they just assume oh Fitz, he brought a joy buzzer which yeah and yeah, very cool when when the when Fitzsimmons runs away. You know, it doesn't last very long. Ward gets there pretty quick, but I, I do quite appreciate them. You know, they, they close the door and then they lock it with the electronic lock because, you know, it's their bus. They've been on it for weeks, I guess months. Yeah, they know exactly how, where, where to go. And, and we go back and, you know, talk about you know, this, oh, do you have, you know, is it a weakness? Do you have a weakness kind of thing? And, you know, did Ward actually shoot the the dog? But no, he refused. You know, he fired into the air. The dog runs off, just like he said. You know, every time I fire a shot out here, the dog runs off. Uh, it, it does look like maybe Garrett picked up a sniper rifle and shot the dog instead, but... Yeah, so he doesn't kill Fitzsimmons. He, you know, he has them th thrown out of the plane, but in a way where, like, yeah, you know, the the. I'm I'm almost certain what he did at least leaves a chance that they could survive. Right, uh, just briefly, I also like when they were at Cybertech and they're trying to impress them and just, it's, yeah, Cybertech, like, we, we've seen this already, kind of, as, yeah, 
kind of funny. And yeah, you know, in this episode we realize, you know, Garrett asked to have Sky shot in the gut after he himself has been, you know, and I, let's see, he wasn't shot in the gut. It was like an explosion. You know, he knows how much that hurts. You know, he, he even said to her, you know, nothing hurts as much as getting shot in the gut. And he still had her shot there. So that, you know, he really is incredibly, you know, ruthless and evil. And the final scene before the post-credits is several members of the team getting caught in, you know, amongst the, the, the computers and such. And, yeah, uh, next episode is the season one finale, so it's no wonder that they ended on a cliffhanger, and I am really stoked to see the resolution. You know, they've only done a couple of cliffhangers in season one. Each time, the resolution has been very, very impressive. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and you know, we the very, very last thing we see is the 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 you know Ian Quinn talking to the U.S. military and like saying you know are you gonna sell us one are you gonna sell us the the super soldier God no I'm gonna sell you a thousand of them which yeah you know you could understand why they would be really yeah interested in. And let's see. Right, and the the um, so yeah, the the episodes. I'm to be trivia. Um, yeah, in in this episode, several characters state they were only following orders, or I have orders to follow. Hydra was originally a Nazi offshoot organization. I was only following orders. Was a defense used several times by Nazi officers and soldiers at the Nuremberg trials. When Coulson uncovers the Cybertech files on the Deathlock program, he notes how the program goes back to the 90s. The original Deathlock, Luther Manning, was introduced in 1974, but set in a post-apocalyptic future of 1990. And the second Deathlock, John Kelly, was introduced in his own comic series in July 1990. So, yeah, very nicely done. Right, and apparently the the... Bill Paxton drives a red Dodge Ram in a flashback, which is you know similar to the one he drove in Twister. So, yeah, that's a neat right. And and in one of the flashback scenes, Garrett says to a young ward, "Speak up, kid. I'm not a mind reader." Garrett winds up portraying the clairvoyant, which is basically a mind reader. So, yeah, that is. For the I th uh, let's see right I also like the the line and I want my plane back I honestly when when Colson is like drawing to lines to connect the different organizations. I real and, and individuals. I really thought that it was going to end up shape. You know, like we've all seen American movies and TV. You know, it's gonna it's gonna make an arrow or it's gonna make some kind of symbol or something. You know. Let's see. And. <laughs> Give me one reason not to blow your head off. I brought tacos, and let's see. yeah, the the thing with you know Colson geeking out at seeing a handheld hypno beam was um, yeah. Now that is. For, yeah, so, right, and also, yeah, the thing about how, you know, Ward, as a teenager, tried to burn down the the house, and, you know, he claims he didn't know his brother was in the house, but, you know, based on what we've heard, 
almost definitely that was, yeah. And apparently Garrett was also a pyro when he was younger, so yeah. And I think that is... At one point, Sky says, you know, the, the reason Ward betrayed them is, you know, the, the simple reason he's evil. Fitz says, I don't believe people are born evil. Something must have happened. I mean, yeah, I guess, I've, yeah, I was, the, the, yeah, basically, the, the flashbacks are making the case that, you know, yeah, something did happen, like Fitz said, and he may not be 100% evil. You know, he did not shoot the dog. And, yeah. Um, the next episode I will cover tomorrow. I'm fortunate enough to not have to wait an entire week to see the resolution of the cliffhanger and yeah you know the the I I quite prefer the the you know the night night gun was fine but I do prefer the icer triple the stopping power and a much cooler name